your Bibles, let's turn to Acts chapter 13. As you do, I uh, want to remind you that uh, it was about 12 years ago, uh, my father, Ron Stewart, was the pastor at Grace Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. And at that time, he said yes to God's call to multiply that church. And so he sent about 50 of us, uh, commissioned us, sent us to the city of Maryville to uh, start a church. And we, we got a, a, at least a, a space in the mall as our office. And we met in a local school every week. And uh, God began to grow our church. And God began to do a work there. And over time, many of those who were sent from Knoxville were able to return back to Knoxville and all the locals that God had drawn were, were there building and, and growing and establishing uh, this church. And, and then uh, it, it was in 2011 that God offered us a, a 30,000 square foot building which consisted of a, a bowling alley, an arcade, uh, go-karts, and a bar. And uh, kind of sounds like the uh, beginning of a joke. Um, but uh, it wasn't a joke. God was actually doing and calling us to something that we really didn't have any idea what he was going to do. But uh, those uh, 130 people uh, roughly at that time decided to say yes to God's call. We decided to say yes to give and de decided to say yes to serve. And it wasn't going to be easy and we had no idea how it was going to turn out. I had very little experience renovating anything in my life. But uh, uh, through the years, God... Uh, taught us and grew us and we met in the arcade and uh, that quickly became not just one services but, but two services and, and then we decided after about a year that well we can keep doing this or we can actually renovate the bowling alley and make a, an auditorium that's suitable for the needs that we have and so we challenged the people and the people gave and the people sacrificed and we built what we call now the theater. Uh, the church went to one service, and then after six months, two services, and, and then after about a year and a half, we went to three services, and we were in three services for almost two years, and we decided, you know, we can keep doing this, or is God calling us to, to take another step, and we believe that he, in fact, was calling us to, and so we decided to buy the land that we're currently sitting on and build this amazing facility and uh, that was roughly two years ago that it was uh, completed. And, and uh, yes, God has continued to grow our church. We have seen God do incredible things throughout uh, the years. And, and we continue to say yes. And, and God continued to, to bless. To date, we've seen over a thousand people give their lives to Jesus and, and take a step of baptism. Uh, we, we have roughly three some thousand people that are part of our weekend services now, either online or in person. And, and so all of that is a result of uh, a, a yes that somebody before us gave. And now we're here today enjoying the sacrifice, enjoying the service, enjoying the ministries that other people started for us. And it all started with a call to multiply. And they heard that call and they said, Yes, and today is a very special day for the life of Foothills Church. If you're new, if this is your first time here, it's a very unique day. Uh, today, as a church, we get to say yes to, uh, again to God's call to go and make disciples. And at the close of my message, we're going to bring up uh, the Bearden launch team that, that is going to go to Bearden next Sunday and begin that work. And we're going to commission them and pray over them today, some of them live in Knoxville, some of them live here in Maryville, but all of them are committing to go and to be a part of this brand new location. And so from this point forward, Foothills Church will be one church in two locations. Pastor Greg is gonna be leading this initiative and uh, all the ministries that will be taking place and the staff members that we're sending there, but you know, what we want to accomplish is that it will be the same kids ministry, the same student ministry. The worship team will be the same people that we see here in Maryville on a rotation. Uh, the sermon will be live streamed from uh, our service here in Maryville. And uh, it will officially start on September the 12th. 
They go next week for what we're calling a soft launch, and uh, that's to, like a run-through practice of everything. And then that following Sunday, the 12th, uh, we thought that'd be a good day, 12 disciples, 12 tribes of Israel. My basketball number was 12, so September 12th sounded like the stars were aligning. Um, and so we're excited. Today's an incredible day. Um, if, you're, if you were here last week, you'll remember Um, as we're in this series called Face to Face with Jesus, that I said that we all have a yes to give. We have a yes to follow Jesus. We have a yes to give to to say yes to our calling to make disciples. And we have a yes to give to say yes to the specific assignment that God is giving to us. And if you say yes to Jesus, if you say yes to that calling, if you say yes to the assignment, then essentially you're gonna be saying yes to facing and serving the mission of God's church. And today I wanna unpack that idea a little bit. When you focus on Christ, when you begin to put him in the center of your life, then all of a sudden now your job, your family, your hobbies, and the challenges that you begin to face, you begin to see through a different lens. It's the lens of the gospel. It's the lens of the mission of God. And so I want us to understand that if we are going to focus on Jesus, if we're gonna face Jesus, then it will always lead to you and I following and focusing on his mission to multiply. And so all throughout the Bible, we see God calling his church and his disciples to multiply. And so I wanna start with this principle today. God wants churches to multiply. And when we face Jesus, it's gonna change our, the way that we look at our job, our family. It's gonna change the way that we look at our hobbies. It's gonna change the way that we look at our problems. And all of that is gonna to start to line up to God's mission, God's vision to multiply churches. Let me give you a few biblical examples. In Acts chapter six, it says in those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, they were growing The word of God was spreading, it was moving out. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. God wants his church to multiply. As it increases, it multiplies, it grew in large numbers. The the gospel is spread and increasing. In Acts nine, it says the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. God wants his church to multiply. In Acts 12, it says, but the word of God continued to increase and to spread. God wants his word to increase. He wants it to spread, and as it does, churches and disciples are created. In Acts 13, it says, the word of the Lord spread through the whole region, again, It is God's word being spread and out of it spreading, the church is multiplied. And then in Acts 19, it says in this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and it grew in power. So as the word of the Lord is spread, it grows in power. God wants his church to multiply. Multiplication is God's plan. It's always been his plan. And you and I are here today worshiping with each other today because a church in Knoxville said yes to God's plan to multiply. And out of their yes, we get to experience the blessing of Foothills Church today. Multiplication, I think, is a sign of health. It's a sign of health for individual Christians, but it's also a sign of health for uh, churches corporately. They got healthy church is going to multiply, just like healthy Christians are going to multiply and reproduce themselves because they're, they're investing in other people, discipling them, encouraging them in their growth. If you're parents, you're discipling your kids. Um, my wife and I have had four kids and all four times with uh, her pregnancy, there came a day where I just saw it on her face and she just came out and said, I am ready to have this baby. Um, all the moms can remember that day. You, you, you love being pregnant. There are some good things about it. But there comes a point 
where the baby's kicking you in the ribs, you're uncomfortable, you can't sleep at night, and you just feel like a bowling ball rolling around all day, right? And so there comes a day when it's like, it's time to have this baby. And in fact, if you don't have the baby, it, it, it's very unhealthy. It's, it's not gonna go well for you. That's, that's, that's a, that would be a major, major problem. And so in the same way, when a church is pregnant, so to speak, it needs to multiply. When a church is pregnant, it means that they have the vision, they have the commitment, they have the people, they have the plan, they have the prayer, they have the resources, and so they need to multiply. If they don't, they begin to become inward focused. And this is one of the biggest reasons why so many churches across America plateau and start to decline and start to fail. And they, they just get away from the Great Commission. They get away from being outward focused. They get away from God's plan and vision to multiply. And so here today, we wanna look at a, a church that multiplies. And today, our church is gonna give birth. And in Acts 13, we see the church at Antioch do the very same thing, and that is the model that we want to prepare for and, and, and what we have been preparing for. And so, as Pastor Greg mentioned a moment ago, I just wanna start by saying, those of you who have been attending here, those of you who are giving here, serving here, those of you that call this your home, it's because of your faithfulness that we're able to do this today. It's because of your ministry, it's because of your work, it's because of your sacrifice financially that we're even able to have this conversation, let alone actually do it as a church. And so, so on behalf of our staff, thank you. And, 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 and for trusting me and for trusting our staff and believing in this uh, vision. And, and I know some of you think that, man, that's gonna be in Knoxville and we're gonna be here, so it's not gonna really impact us. But I am telling you, Two things are gonna happen as a result of this. Number one, the enemy is going to attack. Um, he's going to attack. And he wants us to get off mission here because if we are off mission here, then things like Knoxville don't happen and other cities won't happen. But the second thing that happens as we are faithful is that God's blessing falls. As you are faithful, God will open up doors. He will bless you he will use you in ways that you never dreamed possible. And it'll be in ministry, it'll be at work, it'll be in your family. And the two of these dynamics will always be present. The enemy will be fighting, and as you are faithful, the Lord will be rewarding. And I imagine the church in Antioch on this day, they kind of were in the same boat as us. They didn't really have any idea what their impact was gonna be. They, they didn't really grasp the impact that now thousands of people are going to be impacted and all of these churches were going to be planted as a result of their faithfulness. And so let's look at Acts 13. A little background here. In Acts chapter seven, Stephen is murdered for his faith. He becomes the first martyr. He's stoned to death. And a great persecution broke out in Jerusalem at this time. And so at that point, many of the Christians decided to leave Jerusalem and they started to go to other cities. And one of the cities that they went to was the third largest city in the world at that time, and it was called Antioch. And so as they go to Antioch, they take the gospel with them and they plant a church there. And we don't even really know who started it. And, and so it was just a bunch of you know, random people that were on fire for Jesus that came together. And some of the traditions say Peter started it, but we really don't know. But in Acts 13, we see the result of this church gathering, establishing leaders. And we don't know how old they were when they did this, but, but they, they sent out the first missionaries to go and plant new churches. And just a few verses here in Acts 13 will give us the picture uh, for our time today. It says, now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers. So here are the leaders of the church. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manea, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, who we know to be Paul. 
While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So this is the picture. And the first thing I want to point out is the diversity in their leadership. So these men that are mentioned, who are they? Well, we know them um, from other parts of the scripture. It it says that uh, Barnabas was a part of this team. Now, Barnabas was a wealthy man. He was from the island of Cyprus, which is in the Mediterranean Sea. So you've got Barnabas, you've got uh, Simeon, they called Niger, which means black. So this is a Uh, a man who uh, has dark skin, most likely from Africa. Some scholars believe he is the same guy in Mark 15 that helped Jesus carry his cross to um, Golgotha. You have Lucius of Cyrene, which is modern day Libya, which is Northern Africa. So again, a man of uh, most likely darker skin. He was most likely uh, uh, coming from Jerusalem, most likely poor and uh, fled the, the persecution and was, was a part of the establishment of the church in Antioch. And then you've got a, a high class society guy in uh, Menean. Uh, He's a friend and foster brother of Herod Antipas. And if you'll remember, Herod was one of the guys that put Jesus on trial and, and sent him away. Herod is the guy that killed John the Baptist. And so this is a friend of Herod. And, and, and so you see the wide variety of differences here. You see uh, Saul as well, a part of this team. Uh, Saul, a Jewish man who just a couple of chapters ago in in Acts is killing Christians and persecuting the church. You've got Jews in this group. You've got Gentiles in this group. You've got uh, men of various uh, color. You've got men that are from various parts of the world and countries and cultures and languages. And and, uh, you've got You've got wealthy and you've got poor and upper class, lower class. I mean, this this is a picture of diversity in this church that that we would do well to not only uh, identify and understand, but begin to emulate as well. Only in God's church could so much diversity come together. So many different backgrounds come together and unite around the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nowhere in the world had this kind of unity happen with this kind of diversity. It was a very split, uh, social uh, economics and even race and and, uh, what country you lived in. All of those things would have been extremely divisive. And now this revolutionary idea and concept called Christianity, which in fact in Antioch, Christians were called Christians for the first time. They were obviously uniting around the Great Commission, Matthew 28, to go and make disciples of all nations. And it reminds me, this entire concept reminds me that our faithfulness is built on someone else's yes. Someone else's yes to the Great Commission. Someone else's yes to sacrifice. Someone else's yes to give. Someone else's yes to serve. We're here today, I'm here today because of my parents who said yes to Jesus when when they were 16 years old. Uh, Our church is here because thousands of Christians paved the way from the early disciples all the way to those who crossed the ocean to begin to plant churches in America. And so we don't wanna take that for granted. And the other thing that's true about this statement is Yes, our faithfulness is built on someone else's yes, but it means that your yes today begins to be the foundation for someone else's yes. And we don't always connect those dots. We just think we're going to church. We just think we're living our life. No, 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 no. God is working in and through you in incredible, incredible ways. Last week we read the verse where Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Remember that? And so what's helpful when we're talking about this idea is to remember that you were once a fish. (laughs) You were once lost. You were once far from God. You were once without hope. 
You were, you were once somebody who would attend church and sleep in church, or you were once somebody that didn't care about church. You were somebody that, that didn't get the whole concept of what, what God is doing. But today you begin and, and, and you're beginning to understand that there is more to this. And it's because someone else invested in you. Maybe it was a mom or dad, or maybe it was your wife that finally helped you get your act together. Whoever it was, maybe it was a, a grandparent or a great grandparent that started that spiritual legacy. Maybe you're the first one. Maybe nobody else in your family knew Jesus and you're the first one to break the cycle of lostness and now you will one day be that parent that has impacted not only your children but your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. You'll never meet them but your great-great-great-grandchildren. Most likely you won't but they will be impacted because of the yes that you give today. God wants his church to multiply. In Acts 13, we see the church in Antioch multiplying. And so notice a few things here that we want to be faithful to. The first thing is this. The specific call comes from God and it's affirmed by the church leaders. So this is a, a, a precedent that we need to follow as, as, as faithful uh, church leaders today and, 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 and Christians today that, that the specific call when it says the Holy Spirit said set apart Barnabas and Saul. That is the Holy Spirit, that is God, right, calling them. So it's, it's a call from God and it says set them apart. So it's the church setting them apart and then in verse three, commissioning them, laying hands on them, essentially affirming them and saying, yes, we believe in them, we believe in their theology, we believe in their commitment to the Lord, we believe in their faithfulness, they've been tried and true, so we are affirming them to what? The work for which they have been called. That is the specific design and the specific call that God gives to Barnabas and Saul. Big picture call, all of us are missionaries, all of us need to be on mission, making disciples. The specific call to them was to go into these cities that had never heard the gospel. Some of you, maybe young people, are gonna be called into that line of ministry, to go overseas and go to tribes and go into the you know, jungles of the world where, there have, where they have never heard the gospel. And so some are called to that. The church sets them apart and affirms that calling. And so Saul and Barnabas go on what we know and is called the first missionary journey. They go preach the gospel in synagogues, people come to faith, they start churches. And it's because of that call and because of their yes, so many churches were created. Specific call from God will be unique to everyone in this room. General call, go make disciples. Love God, love people, make disciples. Your specific call is through your job, through your family, through your hobbies, and in your ministry, how you are advancing that gospel mission, how God has created you in that work to impact, impact people around you. What we know is that Barnabas and Saul had been serving in the church for some time. And so it was out of their faithful ministry and serving at Antioch that God calls them to their next assignment. And it's because of their faithfulness that, that God blesses them and God trusts them with this opportunity. You see, if, if we aren't faithful today, God won't bless us with a new work tomorrow. And that's true for everyone in the room. God may wanna open up the next door for you and, and give you more opportunity, but, but if you're not saying yes to him today, that future opportunity won't be presented. So the specific call comes from God. It's affirmed by the church. Secondly, God's specific call is heard by the faithful worshiper. What were they doing when they heard the call from God? It says that they were worshiping and they were fasting. So through worship, prayer, and fasting, they heard God's call to go. And I would encourage you to know this truth, that God speaks through the faithful worship and prayer of his people. If you're seeking God today, if you wanna hear from God today, 
The pathway to his call is prayer, it is worship, and yes, it is fasting. The call to start this location in Knoxville was not done overnight. Uh, this dates back almost five years ago. Um, a, lot of, a lot of prayer, uh, a lot of worship, a lot of fasting has gone into this decision. And I think as we pray and as we worship and we seek God, we're also planning for what we sense him doing. So we start planning, we start saving, we start building teams and leaders. We start getting things in order for the direction that God is calling us to go. And we don't go into Knoxville because it's easy. We don't go there for any other reason than the fact that we believe God has called us to go. And it is gonna be difficult and it is gonna be hard. And as I prayed and as I fasted and I shared with our elders and I prayed and, 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 and spoke to our directional leadership team about this over the last uh, three to four years, they have affirmed this call to go. If they would have said, this is not possible, we can't do this, you're missing it, I would have said, fine, that's not, we're not going, that's not the right direction. I trust them and I, and I believe in their advice, but I really began almost five years ago, this burden to, to start a church in the Knoxville, specifically the Bearden area, but it really kind of dates back to even further than that. When I was in seminary, I was a part of a church that, that actually uh, started uh, new locations like this, and I'd never heard of it. In fact, nobody in the country, maybe one or two other churches, uh, were even talking about it at this point. But uh, the pastor at that time, his name was Kevin Ezell. He's now the North American uh, Mission Board president. And, uh, but I was an intern there, and I was, a, I was just listening and watching all of this stuff happening, and they started a location. And, and uh, man, I was just enamored with this. And they went through this series on why, why churches need to multiply. And God planted a seed in my heart as a, as a young pastor at that time. And, and God began to convince me in that moment that this is what God wants. And so it's not a matter of if he wants it, it's really a matter of where. And I would say God's calling every single one of us to make disciples and, and it doesn't matter where, but for you the decision has to be made Yes, I'm going to do it. And so the only question is where am I going to do it? Where? Where, where, where is God calling me? We, we, we need to multiply. So where is that next phase? Where is that next step? And so as I spent time in Knoxville, you guys, I, I was raised in Knoxville. So I ran the streets of Kingston Pike and Westtown Mall and uh, Bearden Hill and all that uh, for many, many years and even did a so did some classes at UT, so I was, I was on campus down there uh, quite a bit, uh, May terms, making up for some classes, I won't talk about that, but um, that happened, you know? And so uh, I, part of that burden is, is like, man, that's, I know people there. I know the lostness there. I know the need there. In fact, uh, we've done some demographic studies. We, we know that only about 20% of the people in Bearden actually attend church. Um, so we know the needs there. We see the population growth. We see the, 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 the need that has occurred there for a church like FC. And so through all of those demographic studies, we're learning about the people there. I feel like I am and, and, and I was one of them. And so I kind of think and, and feel the same way. And so it's like, okay, God is calling us to go. The question is where? And so then you begin to narrow in. And then I began to have a lot of conversations with people in Knoxville that would say, hey, if your church was, was closer, man, I would, I would be there. We need a church like this in this area. And after several of those conversations, I started to think, God, are you, we're, I'm asking what's next. And I'm, 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 I'm hearing this. Are you, are you calling us to go there? And out of that question, prayer, worship, fasting, I wanted to do it five years ago, but God was saying, no way, you're not even close to being ready. We had work to do here. We needed people uh, to be here to be able to sin. We needed to grow ministry here. We needed to grow staff here. We had so much work here to do, and we still have a lot of work to, hear, to do here. Listen, we're nowhere close to where we need to be, but we are pregnant. We've got the plan and the people and the resources 
and it's time to give birth. And so after several years, God finally said, yes, now is the time. And that was ultimately culminated with a leader. You can't just go unless you have a leader. You know, you can't start a business unless you have a good leader to help you. You can't franchise unless you have a good leader, right? So I'm praying about the leader, who and where, and God began to put Greg, Pastor Greg on my heart, and I knew he would be a great fit for that. And so he was in town one weekend. He was in D.C. Uh, after planting a church in D.C., and I knew that he was the right guy. And I said, I believe you're the right guy. And he prayed, he fasted, and after a few weeks, he said yes. And so then that was that final step where we saw it all coming together. So God calls uh, the leader. God is affirming that leader through his church. The specific call is heard then through the faithful worship and prayer of his people. And then thirdly, the church commissions and sends the leaders. So commissioning is essentially laying hands and praying on them, officially saying, we are sending you, we believe in you, and we uh, are gonna continue to support you. You, you, if you. If you're going to take an initiative like this, you don't just raise money and, and start churches. You probably know people that did this. They're just gonna you know, start a church, they're just gonna raise money and get people. That's, that's not the biblical approach that we see in scripture. The Bible always, always starts churches out of churches. There's always a sending church. And so that's uh, made clear when we see why. I mean, like, Church leaders train leaders, they affirm leaders, they pray for leaders as they go, they hold them accountable. And so it's through this laying on of hands that this is this commissioning moment, a tangible sign. Say we pray over you, we believe in you, and we are sending you out on behalf of the king to do a specific work. And so it goes for us today. That is the call and the plan that we are asking. And so every single one of us will do one of three things today. You will do, number one, you will go. God will call you to go to Bearden. Maybe God will call you to go overseas. Maybe God will call you to, to go to the next city that, that we feel God is leading us to. Every single one of us must ask the question, are you calling me to go? Some of you might live in Knoxville. Some of you are watching online from Knoxville and maybe God is calling you to go to be a part of this. Or number two, you will, you will send. You will give here, you will serve here, you will be faithful here. You will be like the church in Antioch that is preparing and you know, praying and encouraging and giving here so that others will go, right? Or number three, you will disobey. You will hear the call to go, you will hear the call to send, but you will reject it and you will disobey. And so, for every single one of us, we've, we need to make this decision. And I wanna ask you to go, and I wanna ask you to send. One of the two. And no matter what God calls us to do, we sum it up with this. You've gotta keep saying yes when God says go. You gotta keep saying yes when God says go in your life. If you ever hesitate, if you ever pause, if you start saying no, that's when you get derailed from God's plan and purpose for your life, for your marriage, for your job, for your family, for your finances, for every aspect of your life. If you say no to God, then you will begin to experience the derailment. Saying yes to him doesn't necessarily mean you're jumping into it, but it does require the plan and the process to get there. And so, We're gonna show uh, a short video, and then right after that, our team is gonna come on stage, and I'm gonna ask you to help me pray over them and commission them uh, today. Guys, let's go ahead and roll that video. Home, it's a familiar place to stay. It's a comfortable place to be, but we can't stay here. The mission never changes, but where we go just might. It's why those people years ago planted Grassy Creek Church that expanded into Grace Baptist Church that planted Foothills Church in Maryville and now in Bearden. From the early church to the church today, God is doing the unimaginable, one life at a time. He is working and we are walking 
in faith and obedience. The great invitation to help build the kingdom of God is now. The gospel is too good, too important to keep to ourselves. We are called to rise above the noise of the world, to be bold enough to share the hope of Jesus and start something new. Home. Heaven is our new home. And the church is the compass to point people heavenward. So we lift our eyes up and we reach our hands out, expectant for what God is going to do in this new season. Praying for real people, real families, real prodigals to simply come home. All right, please welcome to the stage our Bearded Launch Team. What's up, what's up, what's up? All right, all right, all right. Good to see ya. What you know, what you know. Up high, up high, up high. Here we go, here we go. Yeah. Woo, this is a lot of people. What's up? What's up? How's it going? How's it going? Hey, Miss Joyce. You're going to make me cry, Joyce. What's up, my man? Guys, how are you? Oh, not too soon. Good to see you. What's up, Noah? How you? What's up? Oh, we got more. Yeah, keep coming. We're going to have to do like two rows. Let's have, let's have a front row and a back row. What's up, what's up? Oh, left me hanging, got me, got me, got me. What's up, what's up, what's up, dude? As they are, are making their way up, wow, it's incredible. So, this is uh, the result of a lot, a lot of hard work from, uh, from all of our team and specifically Pastor Greg, as he has gathered this group of people. And as I've said, some live in Knoxville, some, some live here in Maryville, but all sensing that call to go and uh, to be a part of this amazing initiative. And so, uh, man, it's an exciting time. And uh, come on over here, let's get in the middle. Get close to me. All right. Uh, it's, it's, you've done an incredible job. And uh, this is just the start. And as we've talked about today, the yes that you guys give today is the foundation for somebody else's yes. And just like the church in Antioch probably had a lot of personal problems, they had a lot of issues themselves, you know, that didn't stop them from being a part of the great call that God was asking them to be a part of. And they were able to have that faith to move forward and, and fulfill that assignment and fulfill that call. And so your yes today is the foundation for literally thousands of people. I mean, we think about like this year and maybe five years, but think about 20 years and 50 years and long after we're gone, there'll be a church in Maryville because we came here and started this and now there will be a church in Knoxville committed to the Great Commission, reaching and doing the same exact thing. And it's an incredible, incredible feeling and moment in, in all of us are a part of this. You're a part of this. And uh, can we just thank God together just one last time. Just praise him this morning. We thank God. This is his work. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. Praise God. Well, I'm gonna, you guys can stay standing and if you will, if you just wanna raise a hand to God, raise a hand towards all of these folks just as an act of commissioning to them and sending of them as I pray, would you pray for God's blessing and anointing and power uh, to fall upon their leadership and ministries to serve that community and do great, great things. 
Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you as a church commissioning every single man, woman, and child represented here today. We're saying that we believe in them. We're saying, God, that we believe that you have laid this call upon their heart. We believe in their leadership. We believe in their ministry. We believe that you've called them to do this. And it is by uh, your authority alone, God, that we send them out. We commission them. And we trust, God, that your hand would, is already working and your hand would, would be upon them as they continue this work. Lord, our job is to see where you are working and moving and to get involved in that work. And this is why we are here today. And so God, would you bless, anoint, and may this be a location in a church, a Foothills Church that is, that is reaching the nations for Jesus. That as we are one church in two locations that we would together continue the work of making disciples. And God, would you raise up more leaders and raise up more missionaries and raise up more men and women committed to serving you? Would you heal marriages? Would you heal broken hearts? Would you change a city? Would you bring revival through our work together as a church? We unite together, we love you, we praise you, and we commission an incredible group of people today to your work. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening to this sermon from Foothills Church. If you made a decision to follow Christ while listening today, or if you have some more questions about what that looks like, then let us know. You can text FC Decision to 97000, or you can head over to foothillschurch.com slash decision. We hope you have a great week.